you know, unfortunately, episodes like this are ones that we have to still do. And it's unfortunate, like I said, it's just being bullied is a part of being a traveler. I wish I had a better answer or I guess topic. I wish I didn't have to do this topic now that we think about it. I wish this topic didn't exist, but it does exist. It happens to everybody. If it hasn't happened to you yet, it's coming. We're going to talk about being bullied on this week's edition of Travel Evolved. Welcome to Travel Evolved. I'm Mark Holloway, the host, I guess we'll call myself, the host of Travel Evolved, the voice of Travel Evolved. There's a lot of people behind Travel Evolved, um, but I'm the one that gets the pleasure of sitting here talking to you guys. I guess there's one thing about having experience in history that allows for that. So like I said in the intro, I, unfortunately, I've got to do this episode. I wish I didn't. I really wish this episode, like I said, didn't exist. I wish that this was just kind of like, what? But unfortunately, bullying in all professions, in all walks of life, it doesn't end when you leave elementary school, unfortunately. And I think travelers specifically are targeted by a lot of people. We'll talk about why today. And I think an understanding as to why people do this really does kind of help lend itself to I guess maybe you understanding why it's happening to you and, and, and the emotional intelligence it's taking as to why these people are doing what they're doing. But it still doesn't change the fact that it stinks. It's just always been a part of the industry for as long as I've been in there, in, in here. I remember, you know, like I said, doing strikes with you know my first company I ever worked for and just the the BS that would go along with, you know, two people, you know, sharing a room and going out onto a floor and just how one of them would sometimes just take it upon himself or herself to decide I'm just going to be a you know what to somebody and I'm going to start bullying them around because I want to get my way or whatever you know whatever their their personal reasons are which oftentimes isn't just to get their way it's because they've got some deep emotional stuff going on with them but it's it just is part of this industry and I do believe and I'll say it repeatedly in this episode that having the personification and the and what, what people believe is that you've got the the ultimate life, right? You're making all kinds of money. You're you're taking the same thing that I'm doing, and you're going out and getting paid thousands and thousands and thousands of more dollars a year, which hopefully is true, than me. It's it is a woe is me mentality sometimes, and unfortunately, because of the the image that people believe travelers have. It can lend itself sometimes to ignorant people saying, well, I'm just going to, for again, for the reasons we're going to talk about here, I'm going to bully this person. It's part of the, the, unfortunately, the job description. If it hasn't happened to you or you are you have a personality that, it, for whatever reason, it hasn't reared its ugly head, thank goodness, maybe it is your personality and maybe it's a really good thing and maybe you won't ever have to deal with it. But for most travelers, at some point in their travel career, they run across an assignment where... It could be the manager. It could be just the unit themselves. It could be somebody you're constantly working with. It could be somebody that you're giving report to. That's an opposite shift of yours. And it just can absolutely destroy and ruin the entire assignment because you've got somebody there who's making life difficult for you for whatever reason. And it's unfortunate. And it, it like I said, it's it just goes with the territory. And I, I know people are like going, well, that's just not really what I want to hear from you. But it is. If you're deciding to be a traveler, realize you're going to have that person that for 
various reasons has decided they're going to make your life miserable because they don't want you there or they want to improve their own image with the team, with management, with facility, who knows why. So it's coming. And unfortunately, it it's just as part of that temporary contractual thing that we have here in the United States that some people believe they can really be crappy to somebody because they're not going to be here that long. I think those same people do bully more than just travelers. I think more often than not, if they're bullies, they're bullies. But it can oftentimes really be something where it's really pronounced on a traveler because they just feel that they can, they can dump all over you and, and you do all the things we're going to talk about because you're not going to be there that long. So let's talk about why people bully to begin with. A lot of it has to do with stress, their own personal trauma. We all know, and this doesn't always help to hear this, but people that bully oftentimes, more often than not, almost the overwhelming majority and like 90, I don't even know the percentage is, high percentage of people that bully have an incredibly low self-esteem, which means something is going on. It could be their career. Maybe they don't feel uh, as clinically sound as, as other people do. It could just be every part of their lives. But people that typically lash out and pick on other people do so because they've got an incredibly low self-esteem. Sometimes that comes and oftentimes from their home life. So understand that it is, it is rarely has anything to do with you yourself. You're just the target of it. Now, what I will say is, and I've always said this, if you're going to be a traveler, if you are a traveler, you've got to be on your game. You know, there is a price to pay, so to speak, for making the kind of money you guys make. I know that I don't oftentimes talk this way. I usually am really big on saying, you know, travelers get the shaft, they get everything else. And I still believe that. But I do want to say that if you've decided or if you are in the middle of a travel career, I believe wholeheartedly you've got to be the best of the best. You can't just kind of kind of do it. You've got to be prepared. You've got to have your guard up. And I'm not talking about just for being bullied, but you should be able to walk in that place and, and I guess, justify why you are earning this income. Because nobody else wanted to or could do what I'm doing right now. And I beat out all this competition, if there was any, for this position. The manager chose me because of all the reasons why he or she chose you. Which means you've got to walk in knowing your stuff and being prepared for even in this case, being bullied. It's just part of becoming that ultimate traveler and being a travel-evolved traveler is knowing this is coming. So you guys have this quote-unquote great life. Now put yourself, and again, having emotional intelligence, and we'll do a whole episode on that coming up soon. Now I don't think it's actually soon. It's actually a little ways away. But we have an episode planned about emotional intelligence. This kind of a mini one where you can talk a little bit about the fact that you really do need to put yourself in that person's... The, person's shoes the first thing you should be looking at and doing is saying why is this person doing this to me why is it that they're picking on me and you can oftentimes figure it out pretty quickly if you just take a step back don't knee-jerk reaction don't overreact don't go crazy don't quit or walk off the assignment because life is too tough or you're just intimidated by this individual the first thing you should be doing is saying why what's happening I will promise you, more often than not, you're going to figure out it has nothing to do with you. It has to do with the fact this person maybe isn't that strong clinically. Maybe they got bypassed for a management position. Maybe other people in the unit have, have not decided that they want to hang out with this individual or they don't care for this individual. Or something's going on that has nothing to do with work or nothing to do with their clinical ability. It just is making them a sour person. If you're able to step back and first say, why is this happening? Is it legitimate? In other words, did I really screw up and they're just pointing out something I did wrong? Or is there an actual, I guess, tendency to be looking at what I'm doing and picking on me and you know going after me and bullying me face to face? That is not what I think people are expecting when you take a travel assignment, but yet it's going to happen to you first and foremost. These people don't understand let's be honest, the downside of being a traveler. They just don't. More often than not, you're going to find that people that bully travelers especially have never been in those shoes. If you have been a traveler, it's really hard to pick on a traveler unless you've said, man, this person doesn't have their ducks in a row and this person should be stronger if in fact they're traveling because I did it and this is where I was at with my A game. I've seen it quite a bit recently. I, I think it's a fallout from the huge amount of travelers that jumped into traveling 
And again, not necessarily for the wrong reasons, but they did it for the right reasons, but they maybe weren't fully committed to the whole bohemian traveler gypsy lifestyle that comes along with it. And they made crazy money, and now they're realizing there's a little bit more to this career and this job choice, and they may not be prepared for it. So they themselves don't realize how much of a downside there is to travel. And there's tons, right? There's obviously the fact that you could be out of work instantaneously. We always talk about guarantees and that sort of thing. And we know when Travel Evolved that there really is no guarantee. Literally every day you walk in that facility could be the last of that entire assignment because things go awry, so to speak. Sometimes they don't go awry, just the census drops and the hospital decides that they're going to say it's going awry because they don't want to tell the agency that they just don't want you anymore because they don't have the census. But I will say that people that are bullying for the most part have never walked in your shoes, which means they don't understand what it's like to not have a job, to not really have any guarantee, to have kind of be alone on an assignment with, with just potentially one or two people that are friends of yours that are communicating with you or maybe somebody at your agency that's, that you're working with. But for the most part, you're walking in there alone, obviously. You don't know anybody. You're not planning on probably you know developing deep, deep relationships with many of them because you're probably at that same point where unless you know you really hit it off with somebody, it's, it's going to be a, an assignment, a one-and-done thing for you too. So they don't get what you go through. All people that are bullying you, especially if they are doing this and they're not bullying other staff members, it a lot has to do with the fact that they just perceive you as being this glamorous, wonderful lifestyle, crazy income, and they don't think you deserve it. And they're angry or bitter because they want to be making more money or they want to be traveling themselves and they can't or they don't have the guts to or they don't have the courage to or the intestinal fortitude and all the things that make you guys wonderful and unique in our industry. They don't have what it takes or they just you know, simply can't. They've got kids at home or they've got you know, a, a lifestyle that doesn't lend itself to stopping their career mid-career and going off and, and traveling the country chasing assignments and income and careers. It just doesn't work that way for them. So they're angry and bitter about it and oftentimes you're going to be the recipient of it. You're also temporary, obviously. As I said before, People tend to say, well, this person is going to be here long. I don't necessarily have to show them my best side. Matter of fact, I'm just going to show them my worst side because I don't want them here anyway because they don't know what they're doing. They're temporary. They're making all kinds of money, and they're going to be gone, and, and they're going to leave carnage when they go away, and I'm going to be stuck here still doing it with the next, you know, in their opinion, you know, knucklehead that walks in that's another traveler. That's the way some of you guys are perceived by staff members. And when you've got somebody that's not grateful for you being there and doesn't understand the economics of the facility and is looking at it more about their little world and their little unit and how you're you're inconvenient to them and not how thank goodness you're here to help me with my patient load to help with the patients with the hospital be able to have more patients and not divert them to other facilities this is someone who's thinking completely inward and not looking at the bigger picture almost notoriously um, <sighs> What I'm saying is you're an easy target. You're an easy target for a lot of these folks because it will make them look more valuable if they're pointing out all your shortcomings or the things that, you know, little itty bitty things that you're doing wrong. A lot of these folks will feel you're like, I need to be the one that's telling everybody how bad you are because it makes me a better nurse, a better allied professional because I'm sitting there telling folks, Look at how bad this traveler is. So clearly I have value because I'm the one that's showing them that this is not the way it's being done. It's such a head game and it's such a ridiculous part of the industry. It, it almost feels silly even talking about it here on Travel Evolved. I can't believe that as grown men and women that we're having this discussion. But I will tell you, this stuff happens in any business, no matter what age you are, no matter how great your office staff and the culture you have there, you can get somebody in there that it is difficult. And I've experienced it. I've had personality clashes. I've had literally bullies that have worked for me that I wasn't even aware of until the situation comes out. And I always found confronting them with the person they're bullying is one of the fastest, best ways to defuse it because it's like, what are you doing? Why are you being, uh, you know what, to this individual who's trying to help us? And I think the same thing kind of applies to uh, you know, being a traveler and being on a unit where you are still in control. They're doing it a lot of times because they do have that low self-esteem and by bullying you, it makes them 
feel a little more justified in their their how good they are at their job how necessary they are for that facility to employ them again it could be management i've seen managers bully travelers before often it's not even a, a like a rarity it's it's more often it seems like lately that the bullying is coming directly from the person that hired you which is bizarre at best i've seen that where I think a lot has to do with the census dropping over the last year, and all of a sudden they, they loved you, needed you, couldn't wait to have you there, and now that they don't need you, they're going to start picking on you, nitpicking on you to think maybe you're just going to walk off the assignment or to make it easier for you to maybe end early if the census is down low. Who knows? Um, but you are you're an absolute easy target, and it's one that... It, We'll talk a little more as the episode goes on what I want you to do about it. But I just wanted to point out why it's happening. And you really do need to use your emotional intelligence. Listen, there's there's an infinite number of reasons why that person could be upset. And what emotional intelligence is, is really evaluating the situation, t- taking yourself out of the equation, taking your ego out of the equation, and really trying to understand the conflict you're having with somebody Instead of thinking about you, it's thinking about them. What is it that's causing that person to behave toward me or just in general with this behavior? And what is it that's going on in their lives that's causing that stress, that anxiety, that fear, that low self-esteem that's causing that, in this case with bullying, to be projected onto me? What did I do to walk in? Did I just happen to be the last traveler? Or am I legitimately doing something that I could look at and fix that may be an issue that doesn't vibe you know, or, or work well with this unit? All those things are important, but one of the most important things I just said was the first thing is using that emotional intelligence to really try to decipher what it is that's going on with this individual. Also, I do want to point out, in our industry, bullying doesn't just happen at the facility. I've seen travelers being bullied by their agency. I've actually ran across travelers that like to try to bully their agency, um, it's a unique approach. I've seen that. Usually it's travelers that have been really burnt many, many times by, by agencies and decided that the tough guy or the tough gal approach is going to really get them their way. And maybe it works for some places. I don't know. But recruiters and people at agencies can oftentimes really bully a traveler, which blows me away. Like I said, it's one thing when you get to a facility and you've got a tough unit that you didn't know about. How are you going to know about that during an interview, right? You walk into a little bit of a mess or you just happen to have a personality class with one or two individuals, and it's bad, right? You can't really predict that. But from an agency standpoint, I have literally had, I mean, just go on Facebook, right? Go into any of these groups and start scrolling around. You will see stuff that will make you go, wow. Recruiters and agency personnel, higher-ups, directors of recruitment, account managers, vice presidents, you name it. They're all in there sometimes, and I've had people say, they're talking to me like this, 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 and this. You've seen those threads on Facebook, right, where... A recruiter, will, or I'm sorry, a traveler will be kind enough to at least cross off. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't cross off the agency's information. It's remarkable to me that a recruiter feels in this day and age with how many agencies there are that they can talk like that to a traveler who we are all chasing and all desperate, desperate to attract and to retain, which means the wonderful thing for you guys is from this standpoint, being bullied by an agency, you don't have to put up with that at all. I'm the first one to tell you. I wouldn't expect you to put that up with the agency. Put up with that with the agency I run. And I certainly would expect you to put that up. Put up with that. I keep saying it wrong. With any agency, you have too many choices. You might be stuck with them for an assignment, but the minute you start feeling like you're getting bullied about, you know, let's say it's a, like we talked about last week when you're looking at a contract and something isn't what you thought it was, and you're getting bullied, you have a choice. You know what? Forget it. I'm going to finish this assignment up. I'm going to hold my head high. I'm going to do great as a traveler. And I'm going to start looking for another company to uh, take my next assignment through. But I really appreciate the opportunity to work with you. It was great. and uh, But I'm going to choose to go with somebody else because I just am not interested in this sort of professionalism or lack of professionalism I'm experiencing with you guys. You guys have so many choices. And I do think the same thing obviously applies to a facility. One of the things that I don't see enough out there that I wish you guys were able to do more and it may just not be worth your time i don't know you are great at like i've always said at beating up agencies oftentimes you'll talk about a facility but it's mostly agencies out there but if you are let's say a pack you rn and you walk into assignment and that recovery unit is a rotten one and you know it's not just you this is rotten from top to bottom it is a horrible toxic culture in that unit 
I'm just using as an example. This is the kind of stuff you need to warn other travelers about so that people understand that this facility is not one you should just go running right into. Let them struggle with having some travelers come in there. If they're going to treat them that badly, and somebody's going to say, why can't we get any PACU travelers into our PACU unit? Oh, maybe we need to look at who's running that unit and the different personalities that are there that are causing travelers to not want to stay. So anyway, there are lots of things that you guys can do. Let's start off with some of that. So first of all, the first thing that happens, if, if you're being bullied in any walk of life, but let's talk, let's bring it into travel especially. The first thing you should do, in my opinion, absolutely is to address the situation head on. You need to go right to the source and say, hey, you know, I, I don't know what's going on, but it seems like you're kind of picking on me a bit. I hate to use the word bullying. And I honestly think that if you use the word bullying, it's going to lose some value. It's just overused in our society right now. So I would change it and say, I'm not sure what's going on, but it feels like I'm kind of, you're kind of nitpicking me on some things and I'm not enjoying this. And I, I want to do a great job here at this assignment. I want to be able to help the unit that you either that you are in charge of or that you work with alongside of me. I'm here because the facility needed me to help. And I understand that maybe you know our personalities aren't getting along well, but what can we do to get through this 13 weeks so that I can help the unit, you get the relief, you're able to take the days off you need, the managers have what they're looking for, and everybody wins. I think an honest, straightforward approach usually surprises bullies, by the way. They're not wanting to have any kind of conflict. They'll throw it out there, but they're usually relatively passive-aggressive. If you stop in your tracks and say, hey, can we have a chat? Can we go get a cup of coffee next time we're both on break? Or can I sit down here with you for a second in between patients and let's have a quick chat about what's going on? Because I want to fix this because I don't want this to be the situation. You probably don't either for the next 11 weeks or however long it's going to you have still to go. I believe wholeheartedly in any situation, a direct approach with that individual before you do anything else is absolutely the best thing. You're giving them an opportunity to say, hey, I don't even know if you're aware, but you're kind of being tough on me and I'm not appreciating it. So let's see what we can do to fix it. I do think the way you handle this can be done really well where someone's like, gosh, I didn't realize I was doing that. Or you're right. I was having a bad day. I didn't mean to be whatever. It can diffuse a situation. You could turn in to have somebody who's a bully be one of your best and most, you know, greatest allies the rest of the assignment and even a good friend. You never really know what's going to happen. But please, in my opinion, before you start jumping the gun and going to management, other people, this is where I believe it's the it's the best approach. You haven't gotten anybody else involved. You've just said, listen, we're having trouble. And if it is the manager, then fine. You have to talk to him or her about it directly. Because I think that's the next step. If, in fact, nothing is getting resolved, you've talked to this individual, and it's the same thing the next couple of shifts you walk in, at that point, I think you quickly have to go to management if this person isn't the manager and say, hey, listen, <laughs> same thing. We had a great interview. You asked me to come on board. I know you have a need. It seems like you still have a need. I got here and I'm having a little bit of a personality conflict with this particular individual or individuals. And I did discuss it with them first because I thought it was important to go to them without coming to you. And it's not getting anywhere. So now I'm unfortunately forced to handle it with you because I want to protect this assignment. This assignment's important to me. My, my reputation is important. You and I talked on the phone. We interviewed. It was a great fit. Obviously, we didn't know what was going to happen to the personalities here, but I want to get this resolved. I'm not trying to get anybody in trouble, but I don't want to deal with this for the next 10 or 11 weeks. It's only been two or three, and it's difficult. It's making me not enjoy this assignment. I'm dreading coming in here. What can we do, the three of us now, to fix this situation? Because here's the way I feel. I think that's a, a really open and great second step to take. Like I said, if it's the manager you're having a conflict with, it's going to be the first step, and, and you're going to be able to handle it right then and there. And I think, obviously, if it still doesn't get resolved, then you've got a toxic culture, you've got a toxic unit, the manager's knee-deep in it, typically, or allows that sort of thing to happen. It's not that they're involved, but sometimes management just doesn't care. They don't want the conflict. They love their bullying, their bullying traveler, or I'm sorry, bullying staff member, and they do a great job, and who knows what their relationship is there, but they're not going to step in and resolve the conflict, which means you then have to take it up up a notch to human resources, to a director of nursing, to an assistant director of nursing, somebody that can say, hey, this is this is going to be a problem, you know, for you and your unit and getting travelers in here. This individual is making life really hard for me. I, I think there are steps and ways that you can kind of take this on. And like I said originally, I think it sucks that I'm having to dedicate an episode to bullying, but we do because it's out there and it's there. This is your career. This assignment 
must have been important to you in order for you to take it. Now, there are different varying degrees of importance, but what I really want you to not do on this episode is to consider leaving or walking off because you haven't taught that bully anything. Matter of fact, what you've actually taught that bully is that they can continue to do it to other travelers or other people that come on after you. And that doesn't make any sense because that means what you went through, you're going to hurt your fellow traveler. You're going to be going through the exact same thing with that unit. You haven't told anybody about it and you haven't tried to fix it. And it's an important part. I mean, that's one of the areas in travel that we can't really predict. I tell travelers all the time, I have had a great experience in that, you know, just happened the other day. I had I have an ER nurse going to work at a facility that I haven't booked in for a while, actually not even with this company, a former company. And she said, well, what's the experience been like? I said, I can't tell you. I had an L&D nurse work here recently, but I cannot tell you what the ED is going to be like. However, our experience in the past has been pretty solid. The overall experience in the hospital has been good, but clearly what I can't sit here and talk to you about is this is what we had recently as a, as a feedback from that particular ED unit. I ask all the time, how the, how's your unit? How are things going? Every one of my travelers knows that I kind of am curious as to what, what things are like in your actual unit because it's very different unit by unit base. I don't care. If you're, in, if you're in imaging and you're in you know nuclear med tech, you may not see anybody very often that's over in CT or any other different kind of imaging. So what is that nuclear med tech room and small little uh, unit look like? How's that manager? How's that person that's handling that? Is it good? These are really important things. And if you walk away and you decide you're going to quit, tell your company I can't handle this anymore, you haven't helped yourself, you haven't strengthened your career, you you gave up. And it's, in my opinion, it's unfortunate. And I understand there are times, and this says on my list, eventually I did say, if you just can't deal with it, let your agency know and you got to you got to bail and i do think that's the final result is if you believe that you're going to be compromised and nothing has been done you've taken all these different steps to resolve the situation you've tried to just deal with it because it's not getting resolved and now you're concerned about your license or about your entire career because of you know potentially being set up or having something you know go wrong quote unquote I do think it's at that point we have to tell your agency, hey, I, I can't finish this assignment, and here's why. Because then your agency can go through and protect you a little bit and make sure that you're not blackballed, which is an episode that we have coming up relatively soon, I saw on the list, that you're not blackballed by that agency, by that vendor, even by that facility. It's got to be where you are still taking control of your career. And this is where I said early on in, in this series, I said, you got to treat this like it is a different, you know, like it's a business. And walking off an assignment doesn't make any sense to you business-wise. You're going to be out of a job like that. You're not going to get paid until you get a new position. You go through credentialing. You start the assignment. You work that week. And then finally a week and a half, almost two weeks later, you're going to get paid. You could be out of income for a long time. It is not just a rash decision. I don't think many of you treat it as such. But you got to keep that in the back of your mind. That person wins and you lose. They allowed that bullying to affect you in a big way it wasn't just a little way that you got bullied out of a job and now it's going to cost you financially not cool and not the way it's supposed to be done so protect your assignment protect it if you like the assignment you like the patients you like the money you like the location if everything is great but an individual or two this is something that you can fix and i think we had melanie on it our one of our first episodes she talked a lot about getting through a tough assignment this would be one of those situations I would consider getting through an assignment. Can you get through this assignment without worrying about something drastically going wrong? And I'm talking licensure, uh, state board kind of stuff, career kind of stuff. Is it, can I deal with this? And I would urge you to deal with it if you can and then tell everybody how horrible that unit is. Give them your opinion and, and then don't go back, right? Now, if we're talking about an agency that's bullying you, a different kind of aspect, like I said earlier, it's a pretty simple solution. Don't work for them anymore. Get away from them. Choose another company that, you know, again, you can have a great agency with a really crappy, one crappy recruiter who might be having a bad day or two. Like I said, I've seen stuff on on social media where I'm like, I'm surprised that that agency has a recruiter working for them that talked this way to a traveler. And I would say to defend those agencies, more often than not, they don't even know what the, what the communication is between a recruiter and a traveler sometimes. So a recruiter can say some really off-color things that are like, whoa, where did you, where do you get off you know, coming at me this way? 
And the manager or even the higher ups have no idea they're being that they're talking to their potential and current travelers that way. And I bet they wouldn't be very happy if they saw it. And I guess throwing it on social media like some of you guys do makes it pretty apparent that they're that way. But I don't know if you can necessarily judge an entire agency by that. What you can say is that clearly they, don't, they aren't keeping good tabs about what's going on with their individuals. But I've seen what I would consider good agencies with some really questionable um, conversations that, that were in writing through text that I've seen published on, on social media that I would classify as bullying. And my simple answer would be the first thing you should be doing is asking for, is there if it's a recruiter, asking for a recruiting manager, asking that manager, can I switch recruiters? Because oftentimes they don't want to lose their business. They just realize that there are personality classes, clashes, and maybe this person's a great recruiter and a great individual. It just, they, you and he or she don't tend to hit it off. So the first choice would be to switch a recruiter. Many of you have done that. You've told me you've done that and it's been a real success. You just got away from somebody that wasn't a good fit with you and you found a recruiter that was a good fit for you. It happens all the time in our industry and it has a lot to do with how many different personalities you know, that are out there and just different ones that don't jive or mesh. If it is a senior representative or somebody who's a, an account manager or a director of recruitment or you know somebody in credentialing, you may have a tougher time, and that may be more of a warning sign that maybe this whole agency isn't quite for me. And I've seen this, and it's not, it's what we all worry about. We all worry about getting bigger and growing, which is what we're all striving to do. When we get there, the, the challenge for agencies, and this is the, the aha moment of the episode, I think, is to remember what it is that got you to that growth. And I've seen it time and time again. We could all sit here and I could point out and name names of agencies that were going great and they got a little too big and also their reputation went like this because they stopped caring about the traveler. It's just common. And it seems so obvious that that would be what you should be focusing on as your agency grows is not losing track of it. But for whatever reason, agencies just do that. They get bigger, they get more contracts, they feel more invulnerable to uh, fickleness, if you will, of a traveler, and they feel like they've really got you because they've got this, this, and this. But lo and behold, there's 200 other companies that have the exact same thing at a higher, sometimes you know, more high paying, maybe better customer service, and maybe they don't have that persona. So you guys can make that choice really, really fast to say, mm. I'm not going to I'm not going to not going to work with that company anymore. I still would urge you not to walk off the assignment even if it's early on. The only times I've said that you should really quit an agency is if there's significant issues with payroll like you're not being paid, we've seen those, or an agency is just not paying you. Or there's consistent repeated errors and they're not getting fixed with pay or insurance or something that's that is a kind of a deal breaker. If it's not that, I, I just will tell you, I believe you should stick it out with that with that agency till the end and say, this wasn't for me, and don't give them business again. That's the biggest thing you can do. If you want to change this industry more than anything else, stop going to work for tra travel agencies and hospitals that suck. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Stop doing it. It's, it is the wonderful way that our market writes itself. All these new companies that came in the last couple of years, and I've got one of them, you guys have the option of deciding who makes it and who doesn't based upon who you want to work for. If a company is somebody you want to work for, then go work for them. If there's everything you're hearing from them sounds good, do everything you can to get a job with them. If things are kind of making you go, well, that's kind of weird, I don't like that, I don't like that, too many choices, right? So a lot of these new companies, I think there's many that are going to survive because they're doing things better and differently than other folks. But I do think there's a, there's a lot of them that are also going to be, fly by the wayside because they're not going to know how to handle tougher times with thinner margins and how to take care of that traveler. So it's, it is all part of the game, so to speak. I don't know. Okay, last week we were talking a little bit about, I guess, the opportunity that we had, I had to be able to move away from a big company and to almost start something new. And that's kind of what I did. It was a really unique situation. I want to briefly talk about it this week and next week. And that was that I had an opportunity to start a travel company out of the blue, from the ground up. And looking back, 
I, I guess I thought, okay, no problem. I'll start making phone calls. I'll call some facilities. I'll start calling some, some travelers, and we'll just put it together. And that's basically what we did. But it was a ton of work. And I again, this time, um, it was unique that, that, like I said last week, my wife was pregnant, so I think she would admit that um, – Maybe she wasn't thinking clear because it was a scary time for us because literally we had our daughter on the way and I decided to walk off of a career with a salary and a, I think a good future. Um, one that I wanted more than that, though, but um, to take this opportunity where I could start something new. The, like I said last week, the thing I liked most about it was that it was an opportunity for me to have a say in the from A to Z as to how this company functioned from literally the margin. They, they gave me you know, carte blanche for the margins to how we did things. There wasn't anything that I, they didn't know, right? So it was up to me. Lots of times I didn't know a lot of stuff. So I had to learn more of the operations than I, than I knew beforehand. This is where I really got into the margins and the numbers and what it took to make a deal that made sense for a company, but also was, you know, still trying to make sense to the traveler. I knew back then that what you paid a traveler would make a huge difference. And I still think it does. I, I, I guess you kind of get that if you listen to these episodes a lot. And I learned that back 20 years ago. So it was, you know, three, three years into this or three and a half years, I guess, so 19 years ago. It was important. And I love that aspect of this thing. It was incredibly challenging uh, for me. Literally walking in without any contracts, without anybody knowing the name of this company, this division that we called it. Sorry, it's going to be a helicopter. are going to be flying over really low. Maybe not so low. The U.S. Open of surfing is still going on, so um, we'll be re releasing this pretty soon. So there's a lot of stuff going on literally outside the door. So it was really more work than I thought. I didn't know how hard it would be to land a contract. And when I got a couple, it was like, here we go. And then it, when we had to put those pieces together, right, when you only have a couple of facilities around the country that will are using you, You've now got to somehow convince and talk about real recruiting. When you're starting something out brand new, and for all of you that are thinking about this, realize this for a second. Let's say you go out and you get a small system somewhere. Let's say it's in Ohio. I'll use that as an example. And you've got seven hospitals in the state of Ohio that all are going to sign up with you. You've got them. Now you've got to go out and fill Ohio nurses and allied professionals that want to go there, that are licensed there. And that's your only thing, which means that, you know, 49 out of 50 states are not an option for any traveler, which makes it really difficult. You, your puzzle piece has a lot of you know, parts to it that, not, that don't fit every traveler, let's put it that way. So the puzzle's difficult. Sorry about the noise. The puzzle is difficult to, to fill, and that's just the fact. So it's challenging. When you guys want to start all these people, I want to go get an agency, and I'm going to start off and do everything. Getting contracts and having a vendor or even a hospital have trust in you that you're going to be able to fulfill these these needs is challenging right now it wasn't that tough back in 2000 and i guess 2000 2001 it wasn't as difficult as it is now because everyone's like okay we need it there weren't that many agencies so when someone else came aboard and said hey i want to i want to do this there was a tendency to say, great, let's, let's see what you can do. Now there's so many people that want to go into business that more often than not, vendors are like, yeah, I'm tired of offering a contract to an agency and having them literally do nothing or they don't fulfill. So nowadays you really have to earn that right. So back then it was really fascinating to me and it was, it was, it was pretty wild. We grew really quickly uh, to the point where it was just me and another guy. Uh, he ended up heading elsewhere because he just wasn't cut out for the travel part of this thing and it was just basically became my show and I hired three three gals that uh, one of them still a very good friend of mine to this day and we had recruiting and we had account management going on and I was doing both and we were running the whole thing it was all being ran out of Cleveland Ohio even though we were in Denver and it was fascinating to watch something kind of grow and what it made me realize is that you know, I can do this I had the backing of a really big company, so there was very little risk. But it allowed me to say, if I can do this for somebody else and make a company you know, good money, couldn't I do this for myself and start a new, a new travel agency? So it was, for me and for my family, it was a really wonderful opportunity 
to test the waters to find out, can I do this? And I think it's an, it's an unusual opportunity. More often than not, people don't get that that ability to be able to start something with somebody else's you know risk, somebody else's money, somebody else's um, dime, and be able to try to do it on your own. I was lucky that I got to do that. And it, for me, it was a easier, safer way for me to, to be able to kind of prove to myself, you know what, I, I can, this, this is something I can do. The timing is good. I understand this industry more than I think I do. I had a huge learning curve, still always do, believe that to this day. But back then, looking back, I didn't know anything that I thought I needed to know. I thought I knew it all, but I knew so little about the operations side of running this thing. And it, this couple of years, I did it for about two and a half, two, two and a half years, really allowed me to go, wow, there's, there is more to this than I thought. And even that company realized that, yeah, they loved the revenue that I was bringing in for them. But it was different for them because it was recurring revenue as opposed to headhunter where there's no expenses, just boom, boom, boom. Paying the traveler was unique to them. Like, oh, so we have to actually fork money out before we get paid? Yeah, they didn't realize that. They, they, they're used, they were used to just collecting, collecting, collecting. And for the first time, this company actually had to shell out a lot of money. Um, pretty quickly and wait for it to get back to them. And they didn't like that that much. That was a little bit like unusual for them. So it's something that all of you guys need to think about. All of you that want to start your own agency, it's not just free money. And you've got to have a ton of money in the bank. And that's my first thing that I will tell you is that even this company who had millions, and it was a multi, multi-million dollar company of revenue a year, they were worried about how much money has to go out. And remember, you are paying every traveler for a minimum probably of six weeks before you get that money back. And then you get your small you know, percentage of, of profit on top of it. But it is a it goes up really quickly. Your accounts receivable, if you are at any kind of growth, gets to over a million dollars very, very quickly if you're doing things the right way, which means you've got to have that kind of money either in the bank, a line of credit, some way to, to do this that you're able to, to float that money while you're waiting to get paid. And then, by the way, getting paid from agencies and from vendors is like pulling teeth sometimes. Most of them, I think, by design, do not track hours well. They're constantly short paying us, constantly you know, not giving any explain, explanation as to why you know, it showed... 37 and a half hours right in your system. Why am I you paying me for 34 and a half? What's, you know, it's, it's, it's a constant fight. And one of the aspects that most of you guys never deal with, but the money exchange is a big thing. And some vendors are horrible at communication and it has a lot to do with their websites that we all look at and how, how we're supposed to be able to pay you what's guaranteed, what's, what's approved, what hasn't been approved. It's, it's a mess and always has been. So that's an area that you guys don't necessarily know about. But I want to kind of share with you a little bit of those days when I started that new division because it was kind of fun and super exciting, but it was also pretty scary. Being bullied. Let me wrap it up this way. It's going to happen. I don't know if I did this episode justice. I just This is, again, an episode I want to point out. It happens. I want to get you thinking. I think if nothing else, if I get some of you just going, wait a minute, before I just had this knee-jerk reaction or walk off or confront this person and get right in their face, let me take a deep breath and let me use some emotional intelligence to see what's going on. Then let me come back when I'm a little cooler, the situation has, has diffused a little bit. Let me go back and see if I can address this through the right steps and the right channels. And I'm hoping that you guys will be able to get some of this bullying taken away and maybe you're going to teach that bully a little something that you know what you're going to have a tough time getting help and relief in your unit if you're walking in being a you know what to everybody that walks in this into this in through these doors it doesn't make sense to you it doesn't make sense to your facility and it definitely doesn't make sense to me but being bullied is part of travel and uh, i wish it wouldn't be i think over time if we all maybe handle it the right way we can reduce it but unfortunately it's always going to be there but knowing it's there is going to be very important so Guys, as always, I appreciate you so much. Thanks for keeping our numbers up high. Join Travel Evolved, the Facebook page. You're going to love it. we got some new stuff going up there every day, and I will catch you next time on Travel Evolved.